Hello everyone, welcome back. So, so today we'll take up two more problems from the check your understanding section on the chapter kinematics. So we'll start with problem 11. So we have a biker. So we have a biker who's moving with constant velocity v away from a long straight wall at an angle of theta with the wall. Okay, so let's say this is the wall and let's say the biker is initially at this point. So he is driving away from the wall with an angle of theta with the wall, which means which means the angle with the horizontal is given to be theta. Now he honks a short beep of horn when he is at a distance of L from the wall. So they must have meant a perpendicular distance of L from the wall. And uh, at this particular instant, he beeps a horn. Okay, so, so sound waves will be emitted at this particular location. Now the question is after how long from the instant he has honked, will he hear an echo of the honking? Echo is basically the reflection uh, of the sound that was generated over here, right? So, so the sound waves that were emitted at this point, uh, after some time, they will hit the wall, right? Get reflected. And the guy, you know, after traveling for some distance, he's going to hear that reflected sound wave, okay? So the question is, after how long will he hear that echo? So now let's try to figure out the solution to this, okay? So basically, the rider will be traveling in this direction at an angle of theta with the horizontal. And let's say finally he hears the sound at this particular point P. So now let's also make a claim that he hears the echo after T seconds. So in T seconds, he will cover a distance of speed into time, which is going to be V multiplied by T. So let's call the initial point as point A. The distance AP is nothing but V into T. So now obviously in the same given time, the sound wave which is reflected from the wall uh, must cover a distance something like this. So basically the time it takes the sound wave to go hit the wall and reach P has to be the same as T. Only in that scenario, the guy would hear the sound wave, right? So let's draw the reflected light wave with yellow color. Again, guys, uh, so even sound waves follow the same laws of reflection that light waves follow. So after hitting the wall, so let's say the incidence angle with the wall is some alpha. So it'll get reflected at an angle of alpha. So this distance will be L and these two angles, we are taking it to be alpha. Okay, so now let's try to figure out some angles over here. So this angle is 90 minus alpha, right? So this angle is going to be 90 plus alpha is 90 plus alpha. And and this angle over here will be 90 minus of theta plus alpha. So now let's figure out the total distance traveled by the sound wave. So let's name the intersection with the wall as point B and let's name this point as point C. Now guys, distance, the distance AB and the, and the distance BC, uh, they are both equal to L secant alpha. And that we can see from this right triangle. And the distance CP, let's say it is equal to some X. So now we can apply sine rule on this triangle ACP. Right, so so we can say Vt divided by sine of the opposite angle, so that will be cos of alpha is equal to the distance x. So I'm calling this distance as x. So it'll be x divided by the sine of this angle, which is theta. So this will be x upon sine theta. So from here, x turns out to be equal to Vt sine theta divided by cos of alpha. Now the distance ABP, which is the distance traveled by the sound, uh, equals L secant alpha plus L secant alpha, which would be 2L secant alpha. And on top of that, we also have to add this distance x. So that will be Vt sine theta times secant alpha. So now if I take secant alpha outside, now this is the distance ABP. So now once we know the distance, the time taken by the sound wave to cover this distance would be, again, it is equal to T, and this should be equal to the distance ABP divided by the speed of sound in air, which would be this divided by C. Okay. Okay. So now we need to figure out what is the value of secant alpha. And for that, what we'll do is, so this distance is L tan alpha. So the length AC is 2L tan alpha, right? So I'm going to complete the sine law expression with the side AC as well. So it'll be 2L tan alpha divided by the sine of the opposite angle, which would be cos of theta plus alpha. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to equate these two terms. And as you can see there, we'll get a relation between alpha and T from here. So, the, so now it's going to take some calculations from here. So if you observe, the there, there is a cos alpha that is getting cancelled. So on the left side, we'll have 2L sine alpha. So if I divide with Vt, the right side just becomes cos of theta plus alpha, which would be cos theta cos alpha minus sine theta sine alpha. So now I'm going to divide both sides with sine alpha. So this would become cot of alpha and this would become 1. Okay, so now from here, we directly get the answer for cot alpha. Okay, so from here we can easily construct a triangle and get the value of secant alpha, right? Okay, so if this angle is alpha, so the base is 2L plus Vt sine theta and the perpendicular distance, okay, this would be Vt. Perpendicular distance is Vt cos theta. So now we can directly substitute it into our time expression. So the time comes out to be secant alpha, which is going to be perpendicular squared plus base squared. So as you can see, the there is a sine square plus cos square, which will be Vt squared. And then another term of 2L whole squared. And then we have a 4 VLT sine theta term. And this entire thing raised to the power of 1 by 2 divided by the base of the triangle, which is 
12 plus Vt sin theta. So this is the value of secant alpha. This thing multiplied by 2L plus Vt sin theta divided by C. So I have to multiply it with 2L plus Vt sin theta and divide it with C. So as you can see, this, this term just cancels out. And now we'll send C to the other side and square on both sides. So we'll get C square minus V square multiplied by T squared minus 4VLT sin theta minus 2L whole squared equal to zero. So we finally got an expression, a quadratic equation in time. So now we can just solve this to find the time t. t would come out to be 4vl sin theta plus or minus square root of b squared. So that will be 4vl sin theta minus 4ac. So that is 4 times c square minus v square times 4l squared. This whole thing to the power 1 by 2 divided by twice of c square minus v squared. So now as you guys can see, there will be a 16 here and the 16 from here. So we can take it out as four, right? And after that, we have an L square from here and an L square from here. So we'll take that L outside as well. Okay, so now we have C squared and a V square in V square multiplied by one minus sine square theta. So that would turn into V square cos square theta. And finally, the time would just turn out to be, there'll be a two L common times V sine theta plus or minus C square minus V square cos squared theta raised to the power half divided by c square minus v square. So this is the value of time that we are getting. Okay, so now the question is, do I take the positive root or the negative root? There is one easy way to figure it out. So we have to choose the positive value. Why? Because this term over here, guys, square root of c square minus v square cos square theta, we, we know that c is much greater than v, right? So this term over here will approximately be c. So basically this term after being evaluated will turn out to be greater than this value. Obviously, the time cannot be negative, right? Uh, so we'll definitely choose the positive root and therefore this would be the final answer. Okay, guys, so now there is a thing that you guys can do to simplify the problem by a lot. So let's discuss that concept a bit, okay? So motion of sound and the biker both started at time t equal to zero, right? And they're both simultaneously meeting at this point. So if you observe the velocity of the biker is v cos theta in the x cap direction and v sine theta in the minus j cap direction, and it is the same. And the speed of sound, if you observe, it is c sine alpha in the horizontal direction and c cos alpha in the vertical direction. And after reflection, it is still c sine alpha in the horizontal direction, but the vertical component uh, which is C cos alpha got shifted. But if you observe the sine alpha component does not change, right? Throughout the motion, the horizontal velocity of the sound wave is C sine alpha and the horizontal velocity of the guy is V, v cos theta. Now, if they both simultaneously meet at this point, which means that in a given interval of time, they must have covered the same horizontal distance, which means that their horizontal velocities, so basically I'm talking about their X velocities, they have to be same. Okay, so the, we can use this logic to instantly get the value of alpha. So C sine alpha, which was the X component of the speed of sound should be equal to V cos theta. And from here directly, we can get the value of sine alpha as v cos theta divided by c. So you guys can test it out and now you can simply substitute secant alpha for here. But uh, just keep in mind, if you solve it through this method, there will be some kind of root in the denominator. So you'll have to multiply and divide by its conjugate uh, to get a similar looking answer. But uh, but yeah, the solving becomes so much more easier this way. You don't have to solve this quadratic or you don't have to care about this triangle at all if you just utilize this observation. Okay, so yeah, that was it for this question. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question. All right, so now let's do this problem. So we have a grasshopper that is sitting on a horizontal ground uh, and the sun is shining at an angle of phi above the horizon. The grasshopper jumps towards the sun with an initial velocity of u at an angle of theta with the ground. Find the expression for speed of shadow of the grasshopper on the ground and the acceleration due to gravity is given to be g. Okay, so first let's start by drawing a diagram. So let's say this is ground and let's say this is where the grasshopper is present. Okay, so then the grasshopper jumps with a velocity of u making an angle of theta with the horizon, making an angle of theta with the horizontal. So <clears throat> now it's given that the sun is shining at an angle of phi above the horizon. Okay, so let's draw the sun somewhere over here just to signify the fact that it is extremely far away. Okay. So now remember something guys, the, uh, the light rays from the sun are coming from infinity, right? So when they're incident on our surface, all the light rays will look parallel. Okay. And it's given that it is shining at an angle of phi above the horizon. So the angle with the horizontal is simply phi. So the light rays, you can pretty much treat it like, like these parallel beam of light making an angle of phi with the horizontal. So this is how we have to treat this light rays. Okay. Okay. So now let's say this is the trajectory of the particle. Okay. Okay, so I'm just drawing the trajectory and the and the current location of the particle. Okay, so let's say the particle is somewhere over here at point P, 
whose coordinate is x comma y and I'm taking the origin to be the starting point. Okay. So I have two methods to solve this problem. Okay. And they're both similar in difficulty in my opinion. So it doesn't matter which you go by. So the first method is, uh, is just that we know that the light rays are coming at an angle of phi, right? Okay. So let's just say the shadow of the ball is somewhere over here. Uh, is at this point. Okay. So let's call the shadow point as point S. Now, obviously guys, the shadow will be performing 1D motion on the ground, right? As the ball covers the parabola, the shadow will move along a straight line on the ground. So for the shadow only its X coordinate will change. So if I figure out DX by DT by somehow finding out X, then my question is done, right? So that's the whole idea. So, so this is our origin. So now let's drop a perpendicular over here. Okay. So this distance is going to be Y, the Y coordinate, and this total distance is going to be X. Now, the thing is, we know this angle is equal to phi, right? And this distance is y. So from here directly, we can get the base of the triangle, which would be y upon tan phi, which is basically y cot phi, right? So basically, if I from the origin, the x coordinate of the shadow is x minus y cot phi. So now all I have to do is differentiate this expression. So, so the speed of the shadow uh, would be the magnitude of dxs by dt. So this would be dx by dt. First, I'll just differentiate it uh, minus. Now, phi is a constant angle, guys. It won't change, right? Again, as I said, the light rays are going to always remain parallel to each other, no matter which point you're talking about. So that angle phi, so the angle phi is a constant. So this thing multiply by dy by dt. Okay. Now X is the X coordinate of the point P and that is simply the horizontal velocity of the projectile. So DX by DT is simply going to be U cos theta where theta is the angle of the projection. And then we have minus cot phi multiplied by dy by dt. Now dy by dt is basically the vertical velocity, which is nothing but uh, U minus GT, right? So initial vertical velocity is U sine theta and we have to subtract GT. Okay. So now how did I, why did I write u sin theta minus gt and not gt minus sin theta? So let's discuss that a bit. So guys, dx is considered positive in the positive x direction, right? u cos theta is always towards the right. So which means dx by dt is positive. Now dy by dt, what we can do is, so now we know that the upward direction is positive, right? So we'll also consider the upward velocity as positive. If it comes out to be negative, it's fine the calculations will play out. But as we're considering the plus J cap to be positive, we'll write the velocity in the vertical direction. Okay. And V in the positive Y direction is U sine theta minus GT. Okay. So that's how I wrote this. Okay. So the speed of the particle uh, in the X direction will come out to be GT cot phi U sine theta cot phi. Okay. So now this is the answer given in the, given in the book guys. So, so we have to do a little bit more modification. So VS is, so now we have to write cot phi as cos by sine. So a sine would get multiplied uh, with the cos on the other side. So this will be sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. So I made some mistake somewhere. Yes, this would be, th there would be a negative sign over here. So yeah, this will be cos by sine. So it'll be, it is sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. So this will be sine of phi minus theta, as you guys can see, sine of phi minus theta. And why phi minus theta? Because um, quantity over here is sine phi and the quantity over here is cos phi, right? So this is sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. So it'll be sine of phi minus theta. And we also have a sine phi in the denominator, right? So this whole thing divided by sine phi. So this would be the answer to the question. And obviously the time is less than the time of flight of the projectile because after this projectile, th there could be multiple possibilities, right? So this was method number one. And I think this is the easiest method to solve this question. You can also do a slightly different method, okay? And that is by analyzing the different components of the velocities. Okay guys, so for this, what I'm doing is I'm taking two points, let's say point one and point two somewhere on the trajectory of the grasshopper. And let's say point one's shadow was formed over here and point two shadow was formed somewhere over here. Um, so let's say this, dis this distance is DL. I'm considering a very small displacement. Now, if the particle covers a distance of DL, now if I can somehow relate this displacement DL, to this displacement dx using geometry, then I can directly get the speed of the shadow, right? Because speed of shadow is going to be dx by dt in this case, and speed of the grasshopper is dl by dt, right? So let's try to relate that using geometry. So again, the diagrams have to be really good guys. So let's say, so let's say this is the base and let's draw two parallel lines. And these two parallel uh, lines indicate the light rays, okay? So let's say this was point number one and let's say this is point two, okay? I'm, I'm drawing them slightly far apart so that we can visualize it. So if this is point one, the light ray will hit point one like this and its image will be formed over here. And if this is point two, the light ray will hit it like this and the, its image will be formed over here. So this is one dash, which is basically image of one. Okay. And this is going to be two dash. So the line connecting point one to point two is the displacement vector. So let's call that DL. Now DL, we can break it down into DX i cap plus DY j cap. 
Okay, so let's try doing that. So this is going to be dx i cap and this is going to be dy j cap. Okay, I'm not writing dx and dy. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a surface normal. Okay, and let's choose pink color for it. So at the point one, I'm drawing us a normal, which is a line, which is perpendicular to our light ray. Okay, okay. So now guys, this angle is given to be phi, right? which means the normal will make the same angle phi with the vertical. Now, if guys, this angle is phi, then we can say that this angle is 90 minus phi, right? So now if we get this angle as well, then we can get this displacement. And if we get this displacement, then we can get the dx length. So that's the process that we'll be following. So we want to find out this angle over here. So let's say this angle is some alpha. Tan of alpha is nothing but dy by dx. Pretty much, this has the same ratio as vy by vx as well. Vy is the vertical velocity of the projectile, which is u sine theta minus gt. And vx is the horizontal component, which is going to be u cos theta. So now we kind of have a relation for alpha as well. So this angle is 90 minus phi. So basically our total displacement vector makes an angle of alpha plus 90 minus phi with the surface normal. So now we want to figure out the dis distance from one to this point three over here. So the distance one, two, three, that we can easily, this is nothing but DL times cosine of alpha plus 90 minus phi. This angle is again 90 minus phi. Now guys, simply if this distance is one, three, then this distance will also be equal to one, three, right? So finally our distance one dash two dash is nothing but the distance one to three, which is DL cos 90 minus theta, we, we can write as, so this will be sine of phi minus alpha. So this length divided by sine of phi will give me one dash two dash. So this thing divided by sine of phi and that thing multiplied by DL. So this is the very small displacement in the shadow. Now, instead of one dash two dash, let's just write it as DX. Okay. So when the particle moves along the trajectory by DL, the shadow moves along the ground by this much. Okay. So now all we have to do is divide, divide by DT on both sides. And again, guys, this is not the differential uh, differentiation operation. This is just division by DT. Okay. We are considering a very small time interval. So we can consider alpha to be constant. So uh, this is basically a division operation. So we are dividing a small DX with a small DT. This is not differentiation. Okay. So on the left side, we have the speed of the shadow DL by DT guys. It's the rate of change of distance, which is the speed, right? So what is the speed of the projectile? So you can either write it as under root of VX squared plus VY squared, or what we can do is we can draw a triangle. Okay. So the vertical velocity is U sine theta minus GT and the horizontal velocity is U cos theta. And let's say this angle is alpha. So from here, we can also uh, say that the net speed, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle is U cos theta divided by cos alpha. Okay. So this is going to be sine of phi minus alpha upon sine phi times U cos theta divided by cos alpha. So now we have to rearrange this a little bit, right? All you have to do is some mathematical manipulation and then you have to substitute the value of tan alpha, which you can easily figure out from this triangle. And then, then you'll get the same answer we got before. So I'm not doing it further, but uh, basically we write cot alpha again as cos by sine. And once you rearrange, you'll get the same answer. So yeah, this was method two. That's about it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.